And last but not least, rounding us out for the day is Saad. Saad is passionate about building products in the areas of cloud, virtualization, containers, and distributed systems. He's also super passionate about Kubernetes and automation. Welcome, Saad. Thank you for having me. All right, hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining the session. Uh, like Sharon mentioned, my name is Saad Malik, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Spectral Cloud. And so today we'll be talking about GitOps to manage your Kubernetes clusters, you know, specifically looking at Argo CD and cluster API. So a, a little bit more about myself, like Sharon mentioned, I'm very passionate when it comes to technologies like containers and Kubernetes and distributed systems. Um, I was part of a, an early cloud startup called Clicker Technologies, where we focused on multi-cloud application management. And that is actually where we first started working with Docker containers and orchestration platforms like Apache, Mesos, and Kubernetes. So Clicker was acquired by Cisco in 2016. And at Cisco, we work very closely with our customers on their digital transformation and their adoption of cloud native technologies like containers and Kubernetes. So in 2019, along with other key executives from Clicker Technologies, we, we left to start Spectral Cloud to really make Kubernetes accessible and approachable for everyone. Now with that, let's talk about how do we align Kubernetes infra lifecycle with a lifecycle for application uh, or application workflows. So looking at the Argo CD typical workflow, and again, I know this is the last session for the conference. I'm sure you guys have heard it many times already. So we'll go through it rather quickly. But as one of your application developer builds a really interesting feature, they go ahead and merge that into their code Git repository. Now, through the power of a continuous integration pipeline, there are two artifacts that are generated. One is an actual Docker image, which is promptly pushed to a Docker registry. And then the other, of course, is a Kubernetes manifest specification. It could be either a direct manifest or a Helm chart that is pushed into a Git repository. This special Git repository, of course, is being read by Argo CD. Any changes that happen in this Git repository are automatically then pushed to any designated cluster, whether they're Helm charts, customized, or even raw manifest. So there are, of course, other examples and workflows with Argo CD, but this is a typical one for a dev pipeline. Now, the question that I have is, where does the Kubernetes cluster come from? So in many cases, there is a separate team, generally a DevOps or an IT operations team, which is responsible for the lifecycle and management of the Kubernetes cluster and its lifecycle. Uh, typically these days, that entire cluster lifecycle is automated, either using some manual scripting or using Terraform. And generally the scripting and the Terraform will have all the necessary plumbing to provision an end-to-end -end cluster. Uh, this would include provisioning the underlying infrastructure. As, a, as an example, on a public cloud like Amazon, this would be creating the networking constructs like the VPCs, the subnets, the security groups. And then of course, after all the core infrastructure is provisioned, provisioning the actual EKS cluster and any node groups that sit on top of it. So once a cluster is fully up and running, you know, like I mentioned before, the previous workflow applies, right? They essentially, you still have the same mechanism of being able to add your code into a Git repository. And then those applications are deployed into the cluster that is being provisioned and maintained by a separate team. So why is this a problem? Well, if you start thinking about Kubernetes, it's if you're still in the experiment, experimentation phase, maybe it's okay. However, as you start moving into early productization, there are a few aspects that need to be considered. You know, while Kubernetes has become that common control plane, the common operating system for running containerized application, it itself is a very complex platform that requires significant effort to both provision and to operate. All of that complexity on how do you run it and operate it essentially becomes a responsibility for the DevOps or the IT operation teams to maintain in their scripting or in the Terraform. Now, the complexity of course skyrockets as you start thinking about managing multiple clusters and especially across multiple clouds. So whether you're using scripting or Terraform, it also is a different language than what you're used to when it comes to application deployment that are generally based on Argo CD using YAML structures to deploy and maintain these clusters. Um, and again, because the tooling is different, requires a different set of people and skill sets to learn and operate. 
So instead of having a separate workflow for managing your Kubernetes lifecycle and your applications, wouldn't it be nice if you could somehow manage even your Kubernetes infrastructure via GitOps? Right? How would you be able to connect Argo CD with Kubernetes, you know, specifically for it to manage the Kubernetes infrastructure lifecycle? So this is where Cluster API comes in. And for those of us who are not really familiar with Cluster API, uh, Cluster API is a declarative way for you to manage your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it is a governed by the CNCF cluster lifecycle special interest group, has a massive community, and is being adopted by virtually all modern Kubernetes management platform, you know, including Google Anthos, VMware Tanzu, and even our, our company, Spectral Cloud, very he really heavily relies on Cluster API and its capabilities. Uh, one of the unique capabilities of Cluster API is its unique plugin architecture that allows us to support virtually any environment, any infrastructure. So what's unique about Cluster API is this declarative management, you know, similar to how you manage other resources in Kubernetes clusters, you describe the entire state in terms of its cluster, its configuration that is being able to provision. This specification becomes a blueprint or a template used to orchestrate and manage the cluster. Uh, and because the APIs are really Kubernetes style APIs, it works really well with GitOps and of course with Argo CD. So Cluster API does provision end-to-end -end multi master conforming clusters across any environment and lets you perform all the day one and day two lifecycle tasks, such as your scaling operations, your upgrade of your Kubernetes clusters. Um, and because it does manage the end-to-end -end lifecycle from the infra all the way up to the Kubernetes layer, it also has some very powerful resiliency capabilities where potentially if one of the nodes that the cluster API is managing becomes faulty, cluster API can automatically replace it by provisioning a brand new node to take it to, to take over. So how, how does cluster API work in the back? So it's a cluster API, uh, it's a Kubernetes project built using operators and controllers. There are high level abstractions or CRDs that define the cluster aspects, the machine deployments, the account configurations. Now for each of the different environments or clouds that it support, it uses a plugin called a provider. Uh, these provider of course manifest into different behaviors. In the case for Amazon, the implementation would be to provision EKS clusters with node group and the volumes are EBS volumes, right? Similarly, other clouds will of course have other, uh, other types of implementations. So with cluster API, Right, this would really unify the workflow in terms of both the Kubernetes infra as well as the application workflows themselves. Right, so now the dev and IT operations using a declarative specification into a Git repository can specify which clusters to provision, what is the upgrades to happen, any scaling operations. And through the power of Argo CD, Argo CD would detect these changes and then push these specifications into a management cluster that hosts the Kubernetes, uh, to host the cluster API specifications. So we're gonna jump into a short demo where we will provision a brand new Amazon EKS cluster uh, using cluster API. Um, we'll show the actual end to end lifecycle for that. And then also we'll show a quick demo using a bare metal provisioning of, of an actual cluster using cluster API. And of course, this whole thing would be driven directly through Argo CD. So the very first thing I wanna show is that I have a management cluster that is running on Argo CD demo spectrocloud.com. Uh, this right now is, has two different Argo CD applications, a sample app you know, for guestbook and another app called Cappy Clusters. If I drill down into this Cappy cluster and I look at the details for this applications, uh, notice that it's looking at a specific directory or a specific repository, GitOps-Argo CD at the folder Cappy Clusters. So let's jump into that. I'm gonna go into the actual repository and go into the Cappy clusters directory. Right, from here, uh, there's at this point, no YAML, there are no configurations, any cluster supervision. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the directory and copy the configuration for provisioning an EKS cluster. And I'll describe in a moment, all the different properties that are specified here. Uh, we're gonna go back into the Cappy clusters directory, add a new file. And then we can call this cluster aws3.yaml and paste the structure here. So this is the specification for cluster API. It's describing a single new cluster to be provisioned 
And by the way, for the infrastructure in this case, use the AWS managed control plane. This is the specifications to say, use the, the provider for EKS. Um, if we take a look at the EKS specific configurations, you can specify either dynamically provision the resources or statically place them on a specific network. So in this case, we're specifying to use uh, the network here. Um, and then additional properties like machine pool configurations can also be specified. Uh, if we were to commit this into the actual Git repository and we were to go back into my, my Argo CD, and obviously Argo CD, every minute it refreshes the actual the manifest, but you can force a refresh by clicking on refresh. Uh, notice that it detected a change. It's now loading in the latest specifications and hopefully within a few seconds, right? We should see all the various um, aspects of the, uh, the actual cluster API resources come in. I'm gonna refresh the screen, right? Here, notice that it's provisioning now the cluster CRD object, the machine pools and all the other configurations. If I go into the AWS managed control plane, and if I click on the, uh, the events tab, there a second, right? It's gonna show all the behind the scenes of provisioning that's happening for the cluster. Uh, we can log even directly into the EKS control plane here. And if I can refresh, notice that there is now an EKS3 control plane that is in a creating state and cluster API will actually wait for the entire cluster to be fully provisioned um, before it proceeds on with the, with the next operations. Um, and with that, I'm just gonna real quickly also show how to provision a mass cluster. So with that, I'll go back into the GitOps Argo CD directory into Capi cluster, go into the BAK. There is a cluster-mass.yaml. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the raw file. And again, this is gonna be provisioning an end-to-end -end bare metal cluster uh, using a canonical mass, which is a bare metal management interface. Uh, there are some uniqueness to here in terms of specifying you know, what are the actual machine image template to use? What are the specifications for the bare metal system? But if I copy this configuration, and if I go back into the actual cluster, uh, go to copy clusters here, we can add a new file. And I'll say this is gonna be cluster mass 2yaml I'll paste the content and I'll commit it. And then within a few seconds inside of my Argo CD, it's gonna detect there's a new modification change here. And then of course, start provisioning also the mass cluster uh, behind the scenes. So cluster API really makes it very easy to not only provision, but manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of your clusters. Okay, so what are some of the benefits, right, of managing the infrastructure via GitOps, right? It's the same benefits that you're getting with managing application using GitOps. Uh, Git really becomes a self-documenting repository. So you get complete traceability into the operations performed who, what, when, uh, super easy to recover. In, in most cases, if something was, you misconfigured something or you specified a wrong scaling number, just revert to the previous commit and why GitOps will revert to the previous state of the cluster. And depending on your organization, you may also have very advanced workflows in terms of who is allowed to make operational changes into your infrastructure. You use your GitHub or GitLab or whatever CI and Git repository process you have to make those workflows uh, easy. Um, and finally, because it's just relying on Argo CD and the YAML-based specifications, it works identical to how you manage your applications. So, but that's not the end of the story, right? As customers find their journey and adoption of Kubernetes, there are problems that Cluster API does not address. For example, Cluster API only manages the core four layers, you know, the operating system, Kubernetes networking, and so on. But who manages the additional add-on services? from your logging, your monitoring, security, and other aspects of that, right? There are other day two operations beyond the cluster API support. Everything from providing role-based access control within the cluster, cost control, backup, restore, rest and logging and monitoring solutions. All of these different capabilities need to also be addressed. Now, either you build it manually, or this is where the selling part comes in, our product, SpectraCloud Palette does, right? As I mentioned before, the CAPI is foundational for Palette. In fact, we are one of the key startup contributors to Cluster API. Um, and what, what we do with Palette is we extend Cluster API to cover the entire stack, all the layers from the 15 to 16 different integrations when it comes to logging, monitoring, service mesh, and so on. We make it easy to integrate it all as a declarative model. Uh, it caters to all the day two functionality from your backup restore, your quota control, and any additional enterprise grade controls you may need. And, and a third selling point for us 
is that palette is not opinionated. In fact, you can bring it into any existing environment. Even if you have your existing OpenShift or legacy technologies, we can work with this cluster technologies. And we work with any distribution, any environment, in any, in any cloud. So let's take a look at a complete workflow now with Pallet in the picture. So Pallet, of course, integrates with cluster API, but now holistically from a single declarative model that your DevOps and IT engineers are maintaining, you not only get the aspect of provision of clusters, but also managing all the day two operations, right? Especially as you move to production across multiple clouds, it makes it really easy um, end to end. And so with that, um, that's the final slide that I have. I would just say, you know, come and talk to us wherever you are in your cloud native and Kubernetes journey. You know, whether you are starting now or moving your containers to production, uh, we can really help you simplify the way you manage your Kubernetes environments. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in Pallet, we are running a promotion for ArgoCon uh, users where we're providing them with free access for a few months uh, on any Kubernetes project they may have. And beyond Pallet, if you guys have any questions on Kubernetes or cluster API, uh, myself and my team would be more than happy to help out. So feel free to email me at sod at spectrocloud.com or tweet at me at SAA Malik. So uh, thank you so much. That's for our presentation. All right. And that's a wrap. All of these recordings, all of these talks will be on demand shortly. Uh, I invite you to take a look again, listen, ask questions in the chat, and we look forward to seeing you again at ArgoCon 2022.